so in this uh, pandemic situation the pandemic situation helped the two types one is uh, learning the how to teach the subject in uh, online education to teaching learning process i already mentioned this is one of the important task to faculty not the student how to teach the subject in uh, mathematical modeling as well as our thermodynamics heat transfer through online mode so this is a new experience for us as well as students also to learn through online this is one of the important difficulty in front of us so we must learn how to teach the subject in online education because of uh, we are in a two decade we are teaching all the mathematical subject in classroom classroom teaching as per especially the old traditional method of chalk and then board but this pandemic situation to maintain a social distance as well as no contact with the one to one such a condition we have important task in front of us how to teach the subject in online mode especially in the mathematical oriented paper we are facing a lot of struggle in especially mechanical and civil engineering people for design and then uh, some of the important finite element methods and then software modeling everything is a uh, biggest in front of the biggest task in front of us so i think this type of ftp will give away the courage as well as to confident to teach the subject to student especially this year we are facing a lot of struggle to teach the subject in uh, engineering drawing through online mode for first year children so i request all the faculty members to give the fullest dedication to learn the online education especially you can change your uh, teaching learning process towards online education we require the so more many aids just like a uh, software technology some tools we want to develop such a uh, tools for to educate the people in uh, especially mechanical and civil engineering subjects in this juncture i think i am dr mcs uh, take a more effort to fixing the resource person for continuously for for 6 days 5 days so i think this uh, definitely this workshop will be give the full peripherals of the alternative fields full spectrum i happy to say our department is a very strong in alternative field research definitely i think this will be give a go very technograd very fruitful session for the for entire uh, full ftp in the junction i thank uh, dr mcs and uh, dr gopal give me a chance to share some of my views in this august forum thank you sir thank you sir thank you dr d sundal kumar uh, uh, for uh, uh, briefing uh, the initiatives we have taken in our department and uh, the conduct of uh, the difficulties and the challenges we have uh, for the online mode of uh, education and continuous learning so thank you sir now uh, i will introduce the speaker uh, dr v almoli chelvan uh, dot uh, associate professor uh, department of mechanical engineering nit chirapalli he is also the associate dean for academics Uh, so uh, armoli chelvan sir has uh, got his gradu- uh, post graduation from energy engineering from nit vichrapalli and phd in the area of biodiesel for ice engine applications so sir uh, professor uh, interest include uh, biofuels uh, for engine research automobile engineering renewable energy etc is having over 23 years of experience in uh, research and uh, teaching uh, he is having over 50 publications to his credit and three patents so it is evident from his uh, very good uh, h index and uh, he is uh, he has also got uh, an rnd uh, completed the rnd project supported by mhrd on microalgae so he has also served in various capacities uh, the, from the administrative part so with this few note i request uh, dr v armul chelvan to uh, say some words on this inaugural letters sir please sir armul chelvan sir Uh, good morning uh, all good morning sir uh, thank you uh, dr chandra segaran for the, the nice introduction uh, respected uh, dr t sandil kumar uh, dean of uh, anna university trichirapalli uh, and uh, dr m chandra segaran for uh, arranging this wonderful event 
online event and uh, all the participants from various institutes so it's great to note that now we have 125 participants online it's a great occasion actually the topic chosen is a very right time but it is not new so alternate fuels is coming into picture because of the scarcity of the fossil fuels as far as the world is concerned it started by 1972 so 1970 the entire world started facing problems with uh, fossil fuel and uh, people started working on alternate fuels mainly they focused on vegetable oil and uh, ethanol so by the time ethanol was considered as one of the most suitable alternate fuel which can replace the fossil fuel so that uh, the IC engine technology will continue interestingly what we are using today is a fossil fuel but uh, when the engines were developed the CA engines were operating on vegetable oil so now what we call the vegetable oil is an alternate fuel so what is alternate fuel it doesn't mean that whether it is coming from fossil nature either bio root it depends on the period so now for another 20 25 years there will be availability of fossil fuel so this is what been predicted but when we study our uh, mtech program say example in the year uh, <clears throat> 2000 people used to say uh, in another 25 years there won't be any fossil fuels so in such case now say example now it is 2020 so in another five years there won't be any fossil fuels so this was a statement uh, given to us when we study our mtech uh, in 98 and 99 but uh, till right we are uh, running towards alternative fuel and uh, fossil fuel is fortunately available as predicted in 2025 the, all the fossil fuels will deplete but it has been extended because of the introduction of alternative fuel so this we should remember either in the form of 5% blend or 10% blend or 20% blend the research says 20% blend is desirable without making any engine modifications so people have tried so in such case suppose if uh, 2025 was the deadline as predicted earlier so because of this introduction of the 20% alternate or even sometimes as ethanol is concerned even 100% ethanol were tried but most desirable combination is ethanol 85 so E85 blend and uh, as far as biodiesel is concerned commercially people started using biodiesel and 10% uh, doesn't make any difference as far as the engine modifications are concerned so in the existing engines 10% blend is more comfortable even uh, Indian Railway started using biodiesel on their uh, trains with 8% uh, blend but uh, people are worried what will happen if we go for higher concentration of biodiesel so this was the biggest challenge as far as the uh, Indian Railways uh, were concerned so I have uh, gone for a um, presentation to Indian Railways so which was organized by um, a Southern Railway so during our discussion we uh, came to know that uh, they are using 5% uh, blend in the commercial engines then I asked why you are limiting to only 5% because the research says that 20% is optimum and even we can go up to 100% biodiesel so the engine will run 
But the problem is the reliability and the maintenance. So once the alternative fuels are coming into picture, the question comes like how it is going to survive, what are the maintenance required, how the reliability of operation. So certain areas, say example, railways are concerned, so everything is under schedule. So they can't stop a train for even uh, five minutes or 10 minutes because of maintenance once it has been scheduled. It's not like, okay, road transport. The road transport is concerned, you have so many flexibility. Suppose if one bus got maintenance or breakdown, then you can make an alternate, but uh, trains are not like that. Okay, it need a lot of planning and execution. So that is why they are limited to 5% because they don't want to face any challenges. So that means what? So still research is required to prove that the railway engines are good enough to run at higher concentration of biodiesel. So still, right? So the engineers, right? Engineers and researchers. Okay. So we have challenges to prove to the society that the higher concentration of alternative fuels and uh, the maintenance and the reliability of operation. So all those things we have to prove. Of course, if you look into uh, the journal uh, point of view, there are n number of journals which reflects that uh, alternative fuels are best. You have mm -hmm. real alternate. You can go with the higher concentration of uh, alternative fuels. You have a lot of benefits like performance enhancement, emission reduction. So, so many things were uh, been projected by the journals. But what happens to the actual case? So there are so many systems playing okay, for introduction of alternative fuels in actual commercial establishment. So the major thing is the threat behind the use of alternative fuels and uh, the availability of the engine technology. Of course, all the engine technologies are being developed and still it is under development by keeping in view of the fossil fuels. So the moment when we talk about alternative fuels, so no engines are available today which can take up the alternative fuels. So this is a, one of the major challenge why the alternative fuels technology is not being commercialized. But slowly, uh, there is a, a changeover from uh, all over the world that uh, <clears throat> biodiesel and uh, ethanol uh, been alternate and uh, some of the vehicles have been modified to give optimum performance with alternative fuels. So engine design is another challenge. So according to the type of fuel used, we have to do a lot of engine modifications. So then only we can claim for leaner emission and better performance. So now the world is moving towards the leaner emission, what we call is a zero emission. So we don't want to give the harmful pollutants to the environment so that uh, what, what are the technologies associated for reducing the harmful emissions is in practice. So accordingly, in India, we have moved from uh, bar stage 4 to bar stage 6 by uh, skipping bar stage 5. So now we are on par with uh, the Euro norms, so Euro 6 norms. So we have made a lot of uh, changes on engine and uh, combustion system and after treatment. So we will be able to meet the BS6 norms. So once we talk about BS6 norms, then how about the alternative fuels? Whether the alternative fuels will also in line with meeting the BS6 standards, it's a very big question. Because you have so many ch challenges when we go for blending. Because what you have commercially is a engine which is optimized to run on fossil fuels. But once you go for uh, alternative fuels, so this will give poor performance. But as far as research is concerned, so we do engine modification also, so that uh, uh, we'll be able to climb that 
we have a lot of benefits on emission reduction as well as uh, engine performance enhancement. So there is a gap, okay? So commercialization of the alternative fuels, the availability of engine technology, and uh, again, commercialization of uh, uh, the modified engines, then changeover, okay? So this takes some time. So unless, okay, there is a uh, serious concern about such as banning of the fossil fuel usage and the encouragement of uh, alternative fuels like biofuels. Okay, so it is very difficult to go for uh, okay uh, use of alternative fuels in practice. So I think with this note, right, I uh, appreciate the efforts taken by uh, Dr. Uh, M. Chandra Sekar and, and his team and uh, the dean. Uh, Anna University, Trishwapli, Dr. Sindhil Kumar, for uh, making such a wonderful arrangement. And I am uh, very happy to associate with Anna University, uh, Trishwapli. And uh, I am um, in line with their research. And I am very happy to associate with the members, faculty members of Anna University, Trishwapli. They have made wonderful contribution to the field of alternative fuels, especially the ICE engine uh, technology development. So I have witnessed so many uh, research facilities at the Anna University. So it's a very good uh, topic. So basically, so this is a five-day uh, five uh, program. I have gone through the schedule. So the it covers all about ICE engine, all about alternative fuels, all about the performance enhancement, all about emission reduction, uh, optimization of uh, the engine uh, process parameters, and the optimization of the uh, fuel uh, parameters. So it covers all about ICE engine as well as the alternative fuels. So uh, if uh, the faculty members uh, who is attending, right, or who is uh, willing to do research, or who is uh, on uh, research leading to PhD degree, this course will be definitely an added advantage and it is an asset actually we should say because when we do uh, research okay we face a lot of challenges of uh, this kind of information right so now even now we have a, a comfort of uh, our uh, home and uh, comfortable of uh, internet and comfort of the online teaching learning process because we practice for uh, about uh, eight to ten months Okay, so uh, during this uh, pandemic, so uh, we are all uh, comfortable. Okay, at this point, so there is no break in the knowledge. So knowledge continues. Only thing is the physical movement is restricted, but uh, it's only a uh, okay, temporary break. Okay, but as far as knowledge is concerned, okay, we are still learning, and it's a really a boon to the uh, engine researchers, right, and alternative fuel researchers. So if you attend all the sessions in all the five days, so definitely I assure that uh, you will be able to come up with some uh, valuable inputs which may be useful for you to continue your research. So with this note, I uh, thank the organizers and uh, I hand over the session to Dr. Chandrasekh. Thank you, Dr. Ravi Armal Chilvan, sir. Uh, very impressive. Uh, uh, note uh, on the uh, application of uh, or the uh, requirement uh, why we want to go for alternate fuel the associated uh, technology what we require and the emission norms etc and what is the hurdle uh, in implementing uh, the ratio of the blend you know, to a greater extent all those things very neatly explained very thank you sir for our uh, very good uh, impressive uh, uh, validatory address thank you sir Sir, before we start uh, the presentation, Dr. V. Armuri Chalvan will be presenting on uh, the application of uh, nano additives, nano particles for uh, IC engines. So there is an inter instruction uh, for the participants. So attendance uh, for every session, we will post uh, a Google form uh, in the chat box. Uh, so for every session, it is mandate. Okay, you have to submit the attendance. So rest we shall uh, discuss later. So now I, uh, I hand over the session to Dr. V. Uh, Armoli Chalwan, sir, for his presentation. Sir, please, sir. Okay, sir. Thank you.
sir have you started presenting sir uh, no i actually i am uh, about to present okay sir okay I, I think you are be able to uh, see my screen. Yeah. Are you able to uh, see the screen now? No, sir. It is not getting presented. Is it okay now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. So now, uh, uh, when when I go for uh, uh, full screen mode, okay. So I'm. Uh, sharing my screen so when i go for full screen mode and i am not able to see uh, what is happening behind it and um, this is a problem with uh, online teaching so what you are doing i don't know and uh, even if a connection is cut also i don't know so you should uh, be able to track me and uh, you have to inform me whether you are uh, uh, audible and whether the uh, screen is visible so all those things you have to Uh, take care okay so during the presentation okay so as i told uh, in the uh, introduction uh, to alternative fuels okay so there are uh, two aspects uh, as far as uh, engine research is concerned so one is the engine side we need a reliable robust engine which will give better performance better power leaner emissions the second part is on fuel so what kind of fuel we can go for it whether this fuel is compatible for a particular engine say example uh, sa engine or c engine so you can do research in two ways either you can focus on engine design or you can focus on alternative fuels but of course both are interlinked and integrated if you touch anything on engine design this will completely change your performance and emission characteristics or if you change any parameters on fuel whether it is a fossil fuel or alternative fuel or biofuel whatever may be whatever you call whenever you touch something on the fuel properties this will have adverse effect on engine performance and emission so ultimately the engine research is concerned it's like our human body right and uh, it's very very sensitive like our human body right so if any infection is getting into our body right immediately our immune system start reacting and we have a side effect say example fever right so now if we have fever right so we are running to the hospital is it really needed no see fever is a indication of your self immune system which is fighting against the virus or bacteria what are the harmful right, foreign particle entered into your body it's a natural process so something is different will be reacted automatically in your body so the process for mainly your body acts on increasing the temperature so because of increasing temperature right our system right our biological system is taking care of killing the virus or the bacteria right the, the problem causing system so you need not rush immediately to the hospital you can wait for some time okay so till you get uh, 100 or right so till you get 100 uh, nothing will happen okay so it is normal actually if you get to 1 not 2 degree from heat and above then there is a concern about the change of property in your body right so i am uh, making analogy of engine research which your human system so when the body temperature reaches 1 or 2 what will happen your body fluids will get affected de causes dehydration so necessarily we have to go for hydration and when the temperature is very high then we have to cool down so what do you do 
Traditionally, if you look into okay, uh, in villages, even now, even in hospitals, even now, right? So they take a damp cloth, okay? So I mean cloth soaked in water, cold water, okay? So they keep it on the face and neck so that the temperature is coming down. So why we are reducing the temperature? Because we don't want to spoil our system. Because everything, right, every material in the world is responding to a temperature. So temperature is one of the important aspects you cannot neglect, right? We have to take into account. So that is the reason, right? So that, that's nothing but your heat transfer. So we are releasing heat transfer forcefully with the help of water. So what we are doing in a water cooling system in engineering, right? Like uh, radiators are there, okay? So similarly, we do our human body. Similar way, right, engine research is also, right, dealt by mechanical engineers, like how the doctors are working on the human systems. So what are the complexities there with the human body, right, same complexities are there with ice engine research. That's what I want to make an analogy of the human body with your engine research. If you touch upon any parameter, right, any parameter, it will misbehave, completely reorient. You will get a very poor performance. You will get very poor emissions. So it's very, very important to take care of each and every parameter. So that is why you have to first learn what is most desirable parameter for better performance, better engine performance and then linear emission. So you have to focus in both aspects like engine aspects as well as alternative fuel aspect. So this, uh, um, um, of course, I have another uh, 45 minutes. You okay, know, it's 10.30, right? So we have another 45 minutes. So I'll rush up the research work done uh, on this area, right? Uh, IC engine and alternative fuels area. So how uh, this fuel can be used in engine successfully and what will be the effect, the change of the performance and emission cap 6 with the use of okay, the alternative fuels and how to improve upon. So this I am going to share with you for another 45 minutes. Okay, So uh, at this end of uh, this session, if, if you have any uh, question or even at the middle also, if you have any uh, queries, you can disturb me and you can uh, ask uh, your doubts. So here, uh, it's uh, interesting to uh, discuss about the nanoparticles in engine research. So I was working on biofuels, uh, especially uh, the CA engine fueled by diesel. So once you go for uh, alternative fuels, the most desirable fuel is biodiesel, which is not new, but uh, uh, if you go for uh, ethanol, so what will happen? So if you go for ethanol in CA engines, because the properties are not compatible for CA engine, because uh, CA engine is a com compressed ignition. So if you send the fuel, if you supply the fuel, right, it needs to auto ignite. So the CA engines, right, uh, cannot uh, auto ignite your uh, uh, ethanol or petrol okay so this is a property basically the property right so uh, you should have a higher cta number in order to have a better combustion characteristics so which is very less in case of uh, okay the ethanol it's an alternative fuel so now but ethanol has a lot of advantages so Similarly, biodiesel, of course, biodiesel blending with uh, C engine is not at all a problem. It's a well proven technology. But now, how to improve the performance of biodiesel in C A engine? So this is what the research is going on. Because using biodiesel in C A engine is well proven. No problem at all. It's been commercialized. Even Indian Railways started using 5% and 8% blend and people have gone up to 10% without any, any engine modification in uh, road transport. But in the research says you can go up to 100%. So 
that is not a problem but now the question comes from so how about the performance and how about the emission characteristics as we are moving towards the leaner emission right you cannot simply um, uh, burn the fuel which leads to incomplete combustion uh, which causes for uh, carbon monoxide emission carbon dioxide emissions and uh, nitrogen oxide emission and smoke emissions right and particulate matter so you can you cannot simply okay you, you can use the fuel and you can burn it and you can send to the atmosphere you cannot do it like this because the engine em uh, emission regulations are very stringent throughout the world so whatever you are going for uh, alternative fuels or any additives or any engine modification right we have to keep in mind that whether by change of or, or introduction of this new technology what you propose whether it will be able to meet the emission requirement or standards so, so this is what very important so i started uh, uh, working on uh, uh, nanoparticles so this was this happened in the year uh, uh, 2007 and uh, 8 uh, so this uh, by the time right in 2007 and 8 this was very new even the nanoparticle or nanotechnology nanotechnology research at the educational institutes was not so popular by the time and very few facilities uh, uh, were available in the department uh, especially in mechanical engineering department uh, uh, so this kind of right nanotechnology uh, was not a part of mechanical engineering by the time okay not now by the time i am telling about 2006 7 and 8 by the time but uh, uh, fortunately the uh, uh, faculty and research scholars from uh, physics department and uh, metallurgy department uh, they started working on the characterization of uh, and uh, uh, <coughs> production of uh, nano particles from various sources at a lab scale so the moment uh, i uh, started reading the effect of nano particles uh, then I was so impressed by the time I was about to finish my PhD work and uh, uh, with alternative fuel addition like uh, uh, ethanol in uh, uh, C engine. Uh, so ethanol needs to be blended with uh, okay, diesel. But uh, we face a lot of cha challenges like uh, uh, the miscibility, basically the uh, miscibility because the ethanol is immiscible with uh, diesel. But ethanol is compatible with gasoline so the problem again another the next challenge is we have to go for a, uh, an uh, additive in order to make this uh, blend uh, homogeneous and stable okay for a longer operation uh, time so i started working on so what could be the alternate so by the time uh, there are commercially available additives uh, uh, like uh, uh, twin uh, 20 or 80 okay so kind of uh, additives were available in the market okay but I don't want to go for, a, uh, again, another uh, uh, alternate as an additive. So I started working on the biodiesel itself as an additive. So what will happen if you use biodiesel and ethanol and uh, uh, diesel okay, in a particular combination? Say, example, uh, we have to work on different uh, uh, compositions like 5%, 10%, 15%, and like that, with the three uh, combinations like ethanol, biodiesel, and uh, diesel. So, uh, interestingly, by the time uh, we uh, noticed that uh, a minimum of 10% uh, biodiesel okay, in uh, ethanol uh, diesel blend uh, made the system homogeneous, so without any additive. So, now what happens? So, uh, biodiesel is an alternative fuel which is desirable for CA engine because it is blended with diesel. So, it is a separate fuel. But once you add the ethanol itself as a fuel in a, a biodiesel blends, then it starts making a homogeneous blend. But it, it, it is not happening throughout all the uh, blend propositions. So we started working on different propositions. So uh, ternary plot have been plotted for uh, representing different uh, combinations. And we identified that uh, a particular zone in the ternary plot, I'll share uh, those data. So, uh, which was uh, desirable, uh, which, which was able to make the blend homogeneous. So, this was one of the uh, mm, new development uh, we found at the time of uh, uh, my uh, research work.
So, uh, when I was uh, uh, supposed to end this work, then I uh, came to know that the nanotechnology is coming into picture and the nanoparticles are having a lot of benefits like uh, uh, improved heat transfer property uh, because of uh, the uh, the it is very uh, tiny in size it, it is having more uh, surface area because more the surface area enhances the heat transfer properties uh, so uh, it enhances the thermal conductivity so the combustion is effective so many advantages uh, uh, have been uh, noticed because nano uh, nanotechnology is not actually meant for ice engine uh, or the fuel additives by the time but uh, nanotechnology was more attractive in so many places. So I thought, why, why don't we use uh, nanotechnology in ice engine research? So that's what the idea came. And uh, at the end of my uh, uh, research work, as a value addition, I started working on nanoparticles. I got from uh, physics and the metallurgy department, uh, like cerium, uh, oxide nanoparticles, and carbon nanotubes. Then I blended it with various proportions in uh, engine. Uh, uh, engine fuel like uh, this ternary uh, blend and with the uh, neat fuel and alternative fuel so many combinations I tried so I found a different dimensions of research because uh, preliminary my objective was not in nanoparticle research but uh, the moment I started getting uh, the nanoparticles right in, in uh, physical right in, in hand okay so uh, it, it made a, a different way okay uh, and change the the objective as well as the methodology of the research work and finally right uh, it was appreciated by uh, uh, this community right engine research community and even the uh, nanoparticle uh, nanotechnology research community that uh, because we are using what they are producing uh, as far as the uh, certain departments are concerned they mainly uh, uh, focus on production and characterization Okay, they don't go for application, but as far as uh, engine mechanical engineers are concerned, so we are going for uh, application side. So uh, we are proving that. So what what is uh, the technology, right? The nano technology available. We are proving to the uh, engine technology and other fuel technology, and uh, we are claiming that we have benefits on engine performance and emission. So th this is what the uh, history behind the nanoparticle research in uh, ICG research. So as I told, right, nano technology applications are wider, right? It is available uh, at uh, IT technology and energy and consumer goods, and medicine. So everywhere this technology uh, came into picture, okay, because of uh, the lot of benefits, okay. Uh, if you see uh, in IT, smaller, faster, more energy efficient, powerful computing and other IT based, right? If you look into your uh, mobile phone, it's very uh, small in size, but it's it's not a mobile phone now. It is a computer. Okay, so if you if you look into uh, the uh, old desktop, right, it was very big, and uh, later it was uh, uh, downsized to a laptop, and laptop become downsized to mobile now. Okay, so uh, th these are all possible only because of this nanotechnology. Similarly, the energy is concerned, uh, more efficient and cost-effective technologies for energy production like solar cells, fuel cells, batteries, biofuels. So everywhere, right, the uh, nanotechnology uh, is uh, coming into picture. And even uh, the medicine field, you have a cancer treatment, a bone treatment, drug delivery, appetite control, drug development, medicine, uh, medical tools, diagnostic uh, test imaging. So everywhere it has come into picture. And consumer goods are concerned like foods and beverage and advanced uh, packaging material sensors and uh, lab on chips for the food quality uh, testing, appliances and textile. It's a strange proof, waterproof and wrinkle free textiles, household and cosmetics, self cleaning. Okay, uh, um, so, so so many uh, things have come into picture with the nanotechnology. But now uh, our focus is on energy and how this energy, right, uh, utilization and enhancement of uh, the uh, engine performance and uh, how this nanotechnology can be used for emission reduction. So this is what we are going to discuss today. So as the top 10 problems for the next 100 years were reported, um, uh, globally, like uh, energy, water, food, the environment, poverty, terrorism, and war, disease, education, democracy, and population. So these were listed. Okay, top ten problems. So the first problem is energy. So energy uh, is again, okay, the major focus because without energy we cannot live. So we 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 have gone to a, a comfort zone. So uh, because of uh, uh, the the development of uh, so many technologies, okay, so we are living in a very uh, uh, comfort zone. The comfort zone requires external energy. 
right? So this energy is nothing but uh, mechanical energy or electrical energy. So the most desirable uh, form is your uh, mechanical energy for application uh, on the electrical energy. So uh, as far as the energy is concerned, it needs to be produced. Okay, so from various routes. Okay, renewable as well as non-renewable route. Um, so now, as far as IC units are concerned, so we uh, mainly work on mechanical development of mechanical power with the help of the burning of the fuels. So this is the uh, focus of uh, discussion today. So we are working on the uh, first problem of the top uh, problems. So we have discussed what is uh, nanotechnology. So nanoscale, uh, so mainly this nanotechnology is concerned uh, less than uh, 100 nanometer uh, scale size. Okay, so it's a comparison uh, to know about what is a nanoscale. So we focus mainly on uh, less than uh, 100 nanometer scale, right? So this is not uh, uh, new, the nanotechnology is not new, but uh, it has been termed, okay, it has been termed very lately. Uh, because of the development of technology to characterize this is nanotechnology. So this is what right, development because nanotechnology is not new to us. It was uh, uh, there before 2000 years ago that sulfate nanocrystals used by Greeks and Romans to dye hair. So this was uh, uh, evidence okay about uh, 2000 years ago. So uh, and uh, before 1000 uh, years ago. Uh, uh, gold nanoparticles of different sizes used to produce different colors in stained glass windows. So this was uh, okay uh, again interesting. But by the time they were not knowing that this is a nanotechnology, but they used it. But now because we have a characterization uh, studies and equipments available to characterize a nanoscale, so now we will be able to understand okay. So what is the development of nanotechnology and how this are performed? But people started using before uh, 2000 years. Okay, but. Uh, in 1959 only okay people have identified that uh, uh, Fenman uh, or Fenman uh, he said there is a plenty of room uh, at the bottom like uh, in 1959 okay and 1974 only nanotechnology that was used as the term nanotechnology for the first time so the technology okay so we are calling by name and the technology development okay after that only it has developed from uh, 1974 onwards okay and um, you can see so many uh, uh, developments after that. Okay, so this is the actually most important thing, nanoscale size effect. The realization of miniature devices and systems while providing more functionality, attainment of high surface area to volume ratio. So this is the major uh, claim, right? Why we are uh, moving uh, towards uh, nanotechnology, right? The high surface area to volume ratio. So this is because the surface area uh, plays uh, a major role, like. Uh, how the heat transfer enhancement uh, is done with the help of the fins in IC engine. Okay, it's because more the surface area will be able to transfer more heat. Okay, so the rate of heat transfer is enhanced with the help of the fins. So the uh, similarly, right, the surface area is very important. So because the uh, material uh, is converted into nanoscale, it is having more surface area uh, to volume ratio. So you have so many uh, benefits and manifestation of novel uh, phenomena and properties, including changes. So physical properties, um, a chemical properties, electrical property, mechanical property, optical property. So so many okay uh, area or so many properties are associated with uh, uh, this nanomaterials. But we have to choose the right uh, nanomaterial for a particular kind of activity. Say example, if you are uh, 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 working on uh, electrical okay uh, properties, then you have to look into the material which is uh, supporting. Okay, uh, uh, related to the conductivity. Uh, suppose if you are looking on mechanical properties, okay, so we want to in improve the strength, say example. Okay, so what, what kind of material? So the material property needs to be studied first and we have to do characterization and we have to uh, blend with uh, the regular material and uh, we have to info, uh, reinforce and uh, improve the property. So any property can be modified actually, okay, with the help of this nanoscale effect. So these are uh, morphologies of uh, nanoparticles. So I'm not going in, in detail on uh, this nanotechnology uh, okay, fundamentals. Um, okay, so the, these are the various uh, uh, properties of nanoparticles, right? You can you can look into 
metal, metal oxide, ceramics, silicates, non-oxide ceramics, and uh, uh, what what kind of uh, properties are uh, dominant, and what uh, what is the proportion of various properties with the different kinds of uh, the materials. Okay, so these are all the various uh, nanoparticles methods. Okay, various methods are there uh, uh, have been developed. Uh, for the production, so now production will not, is not a problem. Okay, it's been uh, available. Okay, so now uh, the challenge is the application. So we'll be able to produce the nanoparticles by using various methods. And uh, what kind of material we are making? And uh, we have to do uh, characterization studies. And uh, uh, for particular applications, so what kind of na nanoparticle? What should be the size? What should be the properties? So accordingly, we have to okay uh, pr produce characterize and we have to use it in the application. So then only we'll be able to uh, get the benefit out of it. So this is a <clears throat> major concern on health and environment, especially anything like small is uh, always dangerous, right? So now we have a, a pa pandemic, right? So COVID-19 pandemic, right? So here also now the problem is with the virus. Okay, so virus is also again, okay, in nanoscale. So anything in nanoscale is very difficult to control, right? So this is again, once we started working on uh, nano uh, technology research, okay? So this is again another important concern, okay? So we will be saying so many things, right? So far I have discussed, uh, okay, the benefits of uh, nanotechnology, right? Definitely there is a benefit of nanotechnology, but parallelly we have another concern about the health and environmental. Because it's very small in size, it is very difficult to capture or control or, or once it has been uh, coming in contact with the environment as well as the uh, uh, human. Uh, the human and the environment come under exposure to nanomaterials at different stages of the product cycle. Nanomaterials have large surface to volume ratio and novel physical as well as chemical properties which may cause them to pose hazards to humans and the environment. Health and the environment impacts associated with the exposure to many of the engineered nanomaterials are still uncertain. The environmental fate and associated risk of waste nanomaterials should be assessed. This example, toxic transformation and interaction with the organic and inorganic materials. So uh, till now, there is no uh, particular uh, uh, regulations on uh, okay, the uh, na nanotechnology and the related emissions. But of course, uh, uh, we have emission regulations, uh, especially for particulate matters, which is coming out of the engine IC engine, uh, uh, mainly from C engines. So there we have uh, uh, a particular trap, but this particular trap is functioning only for uh, uh, micron size particles, but not uh, nano size particles. Because uh, if you want to capture, right? If you want to capture the size of the the pores available, okay, uh, should be less than your particle size. So once you go for a very uh, small size, okay, uh, trap or filter, uh, then this affects the flow of the exhaust gas. So there will be creation of the back pressure. So back pressure causes the uh, engine uh, loss and another, another uh, problem of combustion. So uh, then uh, we, we have to go for a, a proper uh, flow mechanism. So once we go for a, a proper flow mechanism without the back pressure, then you cannot trap those uh, nanoparticles. So this is again another challenge. So I'm opening in another research topic. Okay, so suppose if you are able to develop an alternative method without affecting the uh, engine flow and without creating the back pressure, if you are able to uh, capture the nano okay particles which is coming out of mainly from CA engines in the form of soot, okay, uh, what we call is a particulate matter. So it's a, a great uh, research work, but still people are working on that. Till only particulate matter, uh, particulate traps are established in um, bar six standards, but it is not capturing nano size particles. So still there is a gap, there is a research gap. Okay, we can work on find alternative method to capture this nano particles. Similarly, once you go for nano additives, is again another challenge. We are uh, actually adding another uh, right a material. Okay, which is uh, uh, blended with the fuel. Okay. So this will not take part in combustion, mostly. And uh, if it is coming in the exhaust, then again, this is, we are adding another pollutant to the uh, environment. 
so that is why the selection of the material is very very important suppose if it is an organic material and uh, easily uh, combustible inside the combustion chamber it is fine say example if you look into the carbon nanotubes okay so because it's a basically a carbon stuff which can be burned inside the combustion chamber so um, we we expect uh, this carbon nanotubes burn completely inside the combustion chamber but we don't know because uh, we have to do the characterization studies and we have to confirm that the cnt whatever you added have been burned <coughs> and you have to uh, uh, ensure that uh, no um, uh, okay nano uh, particles have been available at the uh, tail tip okay so un unless you verify it is uh, it is again okay theory but as far as the uh, nature of the stuff is concerned because it's a carbon stuff so that uh, uh, it's uh, comfortable okay to burn it whereas if you look into the um, cerium oxide nanoparticles because it's a, uh, a ceramic uh, particle of course it is it is considered as a, a oxygen storage okay so uh, it, it is uh, um, undergoing a redox reaction so in forward and reverse reaction so addition of oxygen and reduction of oxygen takes place uh, with the use of the uh, cerium oxide nanoparticles so uh, you have a lot of benefits like whenever you need to convert the co into co2 because co carbon monoxide is uh, uh, poisonous um, and uh, carbon dioxide is non poisonous as far as the low concentration is concerned uh, whereas the even uh, uh, carbon monoxide even if it is concentrated less it is harmful to the human being so that is the reason why the co is been uh, under regulation but not co2 but co2 is coming into another regulation but not an engine emission regulation because the co2 is non poisonous gas but a higher concentration of co2 even may kill a uh, person so uh, as far as uh, the concentration level of co2 is minimum when it is dispersed in the atmosphere so we, you will not face any problem but co is not like this and uh, so we want to convert co into co2 so what you are doing is simply you add oxygen so that co will be converted into co2 so similarly the nitrogen oxides okay so needs to be reduced to nitrogen okay because nitrogen oxides are uh, harmful to the environment it causes for acid rain and uh, uh, it uh, uh, causes for the global warming and co2 is also causes for global warming but anyway co2 is a different story but uh, we will uh, we will take co2 as a separate uh, study okay uh, if you want to uh, avoid co2 then we have to stop the combustion that that is the only route okay so you cannot uh, minimize co2 emission because uh, whenever you okay burn any uh, fuel okay so it will be reflecting in the form of co2 and uh, nitrogen and water so this is a uh, uh, okay actual uh, stoichiometric uh, combustion but uh, in actual case it doesn't happen uh, as far as the uh, nox is concerned nox needs to be reduced to nitrogen so we have to go for reduction okay or remove the uh, oxygen okay so uh, in order to remove it uh, we we, are, we we have to go for a, a reduction reaction mechanism so this cerium oxide nanoparticles will uh, do both okay so it, it supplies oxygen okay at point and uh, uh, it uh, reduces oxygen at some point so in the reduction re reaction so nox will be reduced into nitrogen in oxidation reaction co is converted into co2 so you have a lot of benefits of using uh, cerium oxide nanoparticle but the problem is once you go for a higher concentration of uh, cerium oxide as a fuel blend basically the higher concentration is not desirable as well as it reduces the performance okay so uh, fortunately right the lower concentration of uh, uh, nano additives are desirable and it uh, the performance is better this is one of the advantage we have otherwise people will start using uh, adding more and more uh, nano particles on fuel and uh, uh, they started polluting the environment but now fortunately what is happening the lower concentration only have better performance and uh, uh, emission so that uh, uh, less than 100 nanometers say example in my uh, research work i found that uh, about 150 ppm okay so uh, we found uh, uh, better performance and uh, emissions so <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> when you compare with uh, uh, 
uh, CNT. The CNT can be burned because it's a carbon, but uh, Syria cannot be burned because it's a ceramic. So this is what the problem comes. So once you uh, choose right uh, material which cannot be burned, it's an another pollutant. So uh, you have to uh, take a proper decision. So what can be used and what kind of property enhancement you need and accordingly you choose the material, right? As far as ice engine research is concerned, we have to burn it. There is no other alternate. So if you are looking into burning, then what, mat what material you can uh, use it? Suppose if you are going for a material which doesn't take part in combustion, <clears throat> but is, uh, it enhances uh, the combustion characteristics and emission reduction like Syria, you can go with the lower concentration. Because of this lower concentration, <clears throat> then if you are able to reduce the major pollutants, major harmful pollutants like uh, CO, right, is converted to CO2 and NOx is uh, reduced into nitrogen. And because of enhanced combustion, right, the uh, smoke uh, uh, reduction uh, takes place. So if you if you have better claims, okay, in such case, right, you can go with the additives, but be careful don't go for higher concentration and uh, another research area right what i'm opening is so how to capture those nanoparticles which is not taking part in combustion so this is still we have challenge so uh, in addition to uh, <clears throat> the fuel right side so nanoparticles uh, can also be used in um, uh, lubricants or a nano fluid uh, coolant right so uh, you can you can go for integration of this nano uh, particle additives okay uh, in engine research because once you go for a fuel as i uh, told right we are changing the property of fuel that's what happening one side the second side <clears throat> okay in, even, even the, uh, if you uh, add nano uh, particles in uh, uh, lubricants right it enhances the lubricity right say example the cnt which has been added to uh, lubricant, right? Enhances the lubricity, enhances the heat transfer properties. So uh, you have benefits, right? So you have a lesser uh, frictional power. The lesser the frictional power, uh, the brake power is enhancing. So uh, you have advantages over uh, the nano lubricants. Similarly, the nano uh, uh, coolant. Okay, so this nano coolant. Uh, you, you can you can go for better heat transfer properties because mainly right these nanoparticles are uh, most uh, promising in the heat transfer uh, area okay i think uh, uh, dr chandrasekharan uh, worked on nanoparticle study especially related to heat transfer okay so um, this is again another uh, route where uh, the the cooling side right the cooling is again another important aspect uh, for better uh, uh, engine performance uh, without uh, engine uh, damage uh, due to thermal expansion uh, okay or engine seizure uh, or you can go for downsizing your uh, uh, the radiator uh, with the en enhanced right uh, heat transfer properties so if you if you go for integration of this uh, nano fluid uh, as a coolant nano lubricant nano particle additives in addition one more thing is that the construction of the uh, engine right the construction of engine itself the surface finish become okay nano finish okay so this nano finish again have a lot of benefits so uh, especially the uh, nanotechnology okay when when we incorporate in all the dimensions right you will be able to climb better performance and lean emissions so these are the uh, applications uh, like uh, <clears throat> in fuel lubricants and coolant right you have uh, uh, efficient combustion, better performance, emission reduction, reduced fuel consumption, enhanced heat transfer, increased operational life, better cooling, enhanced typological performance. So uh, just now we have discussed, okay, so this study is very important, right? You can see the uh, vehicles, uh, how uh, it is uh, uh, giving a black smoke. This black smoke is nothing but the soot particles, which is uh, <coughs> available in the exhaust. But now you are not seeing this kind of uh, black smoke because of uh, the particulate trap percent, uh, which captures all the soap particles. In addition, that the engine is uh, tuned in such a way that better combustion takes place. So this is not actually uh, uh, available now. But if you are not uh, maintaining your engine, okay, in a healthy conditions like engine tuning, 
right or the fuel uh, tuning like a property right so matching the property with the proper engine so if you are not doing properly even today you can see a black smoke like this okay so it is the black smoke is a uh, result of incomplete combustion that's what we have to uh, look into that and uh, this causes for uh, health safety and uh, okay environmental uh, degradation the major pollutants was we discussed <clears throat> I'm skipping some of the slides because of uh, the uh, shortage of uh, time. So the effect of uh, exhaust emission. So it's a, a short-term exposure, a long exposure. Okay. <laughs> Uh, I think some disturbance. Uh... Yeah, sir. Yeah, sir. I will do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Fine. So effects of uh, the exhaust emission, of course, this also we have uh, discussed. <clears throat> the emission standards. So we started uh, uh, in uh, 92 uh, and slowly we moved. So uh, before this emission regulations have present. Okay, so you, you use the fuel, you burn it and Release to the atmosphere. That's it. So never, never bother on what you are releasing. But uh, because of that, so many problems, especially the health problems as well as the environmental problems, have noticed like acid rains. Then people started uh, thinking why it is happening. So uh, mainly from uh, automobile exhaust. So people started controlling the uh, harmful emissions. So controlling in the sense uh, conversion. Okay, conversion from harmful into harmless. That's what we are doing it. But if you want to really control it, we have to stop the combustion. So this is the ultimate uh, thing. So okay, so now the reasons, uh, okay, developments moves towards uh, how to uh, get power without IC engine. Okay, so because why uh, this is being under uh, uh, proposal? <coughs> because whenever combustion takes place. There will be products of combustion. The products of combustion is always not desirable. Okay, so we'll we'll be calling CO2 is good. It's a result of complete combustion, but only CO is bad. But if you look into CO2, CO2 causes for greenhouse gases and uh, global warming. The global warming, okay, indirectly affects the environment. So we have to stop the combustion. So this is what people are moving. Okay, and uh, now uh, most of the countries have come forward to go away with IC engines, especially for automobile applications and uh, electric cars, maybe on the market. Okay, from uh, 2045 onwards. Okay, 2045. So uh, we have some time, right? So another 25 years. Okay, so in another 25 years, what you are going to do? Is very important, right? So you cannot simply throw all the ice engine powered vehicles or ice engines, okay, to a junk. You cannot ban, okay, anything today because we are enjoying the benefits of IC engine in everywhere, right? Whenever mechanical power is required, then switch on the engine, right? It may be uh, your irrigation purpose, or it may be your uh, two wheeler or four wheeler, okay. So uh, mainly, right? Mainly, whenever you want a mechanical power and comfort and small power requirement we have to depend only on ic engine so ic engine can be thrown today but <clears throat> people started using how to go away from ic engine because of mainly the pollutants so if you are able to develop a technology okay especially the alternative fuel technology so the challenge of the uh, depletion of fossil fuel is taken care of, and the challenge of the emission is taken care so now you have right you, you need to not you have you need to work on this even though the topic is very old but now you have a challenge okay whether you live or you die okay so people when whenever uh, people look into the topic alternative fuels are rising things right so even the research scholars right one once they uh, want to start the research okay they have their own doubts whether this is a in research it's a very good question. Well, there were so many right brains are going on with uh, 
okay ice engine whether ice engines will be there or not because i am handling a course on advanced ice engines right so people are asking sir ice engine uh, will not be available for uh, uh, not available after some time okay then what is the need for studying this course because now people are uh, banning ice engines because of two problems one is the fuel availability the fossil fuel availability second one is the emission suppose if you if you have alternate say example alternative fuel and this alternative fuel is capable of giving linear emission or harmless or uh, something then people won't ban because we always want to live in a comfort zone okay for living with comfort zone you need engine basically you need engine you need mechanical power so how do generate mechanical power it's a very big question but now people are moving towards the electric vehicle technology because okay as far as the vehicle is concerned okay there is no emission no tailpipe emission mainly we have to look into that there is no tailpipe emission but how do you generate electricity is it coming from renewable it's fine so now we have to go for another technology development like renewable energy sources if you are looking for electric vehicle technology yes it is fine use battery charge with the help of renewable energy like solar or wind then it is fine but now another problem is coming into picture like a batteries okay so how about the batteries how about the storage of okay battery how about the disposal of batteries the major problem today what we are facing is disposal of batteries so the because battery creates again another environmental pollution so as far as right uh, as far as the power is concerned if you are relying only on renewable energy okay then it is fine but even this electric vehicle technology will bring out new pollutants right so remember this will bring out new pollutants it will not okay eradicate the pollutants because pollutants will be available in different forms see now there is no okay a problem with the disposal of batteries but just imagine if all the vehicles have been converted into right uh, battery operated vehicles then how many batteries you need to produce and how you are going to dispose of because the life of battery itself normally 3 years right and you can extend up to 5 years okay or 7 years but after that what you are going to do you have to throw all the batteries so where you will store because where is the space available and if you store if you keep it okay to the atmosphere so what will happen to the environmental pollution we don't know today okay so always right always it's right? whenever you work on engineering right it is only conversion from one form into another form right as conservation principle says okay so we are we are converting right uh, one form of energy into another form of energy electric vehicle technology is also on the same line okay so now you are avoiding the ic engine but you are introducing an another okay pollutants in the form of battery battery okay charging the battery so if you are charging the battery with the help of fossil fuel mainly you know coal being used right for uh, uh, our energy requirement so it's a fossil fuel uh, the of course coal is available for another 100 150 years so will be uh, mainly sticking on to another 150 years with the coal so this is fossil fuel so uh, just imagine the electrical energy requirement keep on increasing so you need to burn more coal because more the coal you burn more the pollutants you are releasing to the environment but uh, what we claim is the tailpipe emissions okay from automobile automobile tailpipe emissions alone is zero but look into the power plant the power plant give more pollutants okay because the electrical energy requirement is very high so unless you you completely change over so charging means all electric vehicles should be charged only by solar okay suppose if you make the regulations like this and you are not supposed to use okay uh, your electricity given by government produced from fossil fuels should not be used to charge your electric vehicle so it's again another okay uh, challenge because uh, how to enforce all those things because you have available you have plug points available at your home okay so you may try with your power available to charge your two wheeler four wheeler so this is what happens okay so there should be a, a full proof system so we need lot of development okay 
So charging electric vehicles should be only from solar. So this kind of things are required, okay, in order to go for the actual changeover. So ice engine technology, now you have a challenge, okay, so either you live or die. So if you want to live, then you have to work more on alternative fuels and emission control, okay, and compatibility in ice engine. So if you are able to succeed, right, if you are able to succeed, because it's a gap, if you are able to succeed, then people will not throw ice engines. Otherwise, ice engines will not be there in the market, okay, say example, after 2050. Okay, so this is what uh, uh, the present situation. So these are all the uh, technological side. Of course, you have so many uh, uh, <clears throat> sessions, right? So which is looking on various aspects. So I'm not touching all those things. Uh, this is what the uh, reactions are taking place. As far as uh, the uh, more technology is concerned, reactions uh, the Syria working as oxygen store the release of oxygen in the presence of reductive gases and removal of oxygen by interaction with oxidizing species so this is very interesting to note like uh, cerium oxide okay uh, CO2 is converted into uh, Cu2O3 Okay, uh, and uh, cerium oxide may provide oxygen for oxidation of CO or uh, it may absorb oxygen for reduction of NOx. We have discussed. So, this is about the hydrocarbon combustion like um, CO2 plus uh, um, hydrocarbons. Okay, so we'll be giving uh, Cu2O3 and uh, CO2 and uh, H2O. Then, soot burning uh, is CO2 and the soot uh, gives for Cu2O3 and CO2. Uh, the series oxide form, there's a C2O3 formed from the oxidation of hydrocarbon, gets reoxidized to cerium oxide uh, through reduction of nitrogen oxide. So now you will be getting back your uh, cerium oxide. So this is a major advantage uh, where uh, you will be getting with the use of the cerium oxide. Okay. Then the amount of oxygen reversibly provided in and uh, removed from the gas phase is called the oxygen storage capacity. That's a OAC of the CDS. So it's a major uh, advantage. Of course, um, I'm not going uh, in depth because uh, of uh, shortage of the time. Uh, so you can go for a different kind of blending. Okay, so this is what we have done in the laboratory. Like uh, this is a, uh, uh, what you're looking is a uh, cerium oxide nanoparticles uh, addition in the fuel, uh, diesel and diesel. As I told, right, the diesel is a diesel, uh, then ester, it's a biodiesel and alcohol. So this combination, what we call is a distal fuel blend. So this was uh, uh, developed uh, by <clears throat> uh, 2007 and 8, okay, uh, in our laboratory. And as far as the CNT is concerned, enhanced uh, uh, the burning rate and improves the CK number, increase the viscosity, and render the fuels uh, conductive. So because of uh, these benefits. Um, Okay, CMT uh, can also be used as an, a fuel additive. So now we, we have to go for, um, okay, as I told, the selection of materials, okay, whether you will go for CMT or CDA or the combination of this. In addition, we have uh, so many things that people have tried, like uh, uh, alumina, uh, they tried, and uh, copper, they tried, then iron, they tried. Okay, so they tried anything, even gold nanoparticles also, you can, you can use it, but thing is, gold is very costly, right? So uh, people have used right different materials. So, what kind of materials uh, you can uh, use? Okay, that depends on okay either uh, by cost or uh, what will be the impact on the uh, environment and basically the availability. Okay, so all those things uh, are. So this is a uh, ten image of the CNT. Okay, so CNT blended uh, uh, diesel. So out of this, uh, what kind of conclusions we arrive is uh, the addition of pl nanoparticles such as cerium oxide nanoparticle and carbon nanotubes in neat diesel enhance the engine performance and reduce the harmful exhaust emissions. The addition of ceria and CNT each 50 ppm in diesel increase the cylinder gas pressure and advance the occurrence of peak pressure 
as the addition of ceria and CMT accelerates the combustion. However, the variation between the fuel blends with the ceria and CMT concentration 20, 50, and 100 ppm are considered. The addition of ceria and CMT in diesel advances the occurrence of the peak heat release rate when compared with the neat diesel and these 12 blends. The addition of cerium oxide nanoparticles and carbon nanotubes decreased the ignition delay and accelerated the earlier initiation of combustion, which resulted in the lower heat release rate and advancement of the peak heat release rate. <coughs> these are all the research findings. Of course, uh, it takes a uh, uh, okay, separate session if you want to discuss on combustion capsules. Of course, uh, uh, in the five days uh, program, right? So uh, the discussion about uh, the heat release rate, uh, Okay, the combustion capsic like ignition timing, uh, combustion duration, ignition delay. Okay, so and uh, so everything will be discussed in detail. Okay, in the uh, forthcoming sessions, the variation of the carbon monoxide emission was marginal at the lower loads up to 0.3 megapascal, and at the higher loads, the addition of ceria and CNT in diesel reduced the CO emissions to 30.6 percent. So approximately, you can take 30 percent when compared with the neat diesel. <coughs> The addition of ceria and CNT in diesel reduce the hydrocarbon emissions as they enhance the combustion. The NO emission increase with the addition of ceria and the CNT in diesel at lower loads and decrease the uh, at higher loads to 2.8 percent. However, the cerium oxide nanoparticles addition, that's 50 ppm, in diesel increase the NO emissions to 12 percent. So uh, this is evident because the combustion is uh, uh, better, so it enhances the uh, heat transfer. <coughs> so because of increase in temperature, the NO emissions. Uh, uh, has increased because NO is directly depends on the combustion temperature. So uh, in order to reduce the combustion temperature, we use alcohols. Okay, so here, as I told, uh, the objective of using alcohols in C engines is not only as an, as an alternate fuel. So alcohol addition, okay, reduces the combustion temperature during the evaporation of alcohol in the combustion chamber. So the, uh, when the temperature drops, then it uh, helps for in emission reduction. So, if you want to simultaneously reduce NOx and smoke, okay, the alcohol is one of the best way, okay, where you can reduce the in emission. The use of ceria and CNT each 50 ppm concentrations in diesel decreases the smoke absorption coefficient to 73 percent. So, this is again another uh, interesting thing. Like the smoke absorption coefficient is a, uh, it's nothing but uh, the smoke concentration. So, it has uh, come down. To 73 percent, so it's a, a great achievement uh, with the help of this uh, nano additives. Okay. Uh, so, there are um, scope for the future work like studies on the fuel spray behavior using diesel and distal blends with the fuel burn nanoparticles additives may be carried out using high speed camera to understand the fuel spray pattern with alternate fuels and fuel burn nanoparticle additives. The present investigations may be extended to study effect of fuel burn nano additives on the performance combustion emission gasics of a SA engine using a gasoline fuel blend. So, uh, very uh, uh, few work have been reported, okay, with um, okay, gasoline ethanol blends with the nano additives, uh, which is meant for SA engines. Because the uh, major, right, major uh, work is done on CA engines, okay, very less work is done on SA engines with the nano additives, uh, especially on gasoline fuel blends. So you have, again, even, even today, right, you have a scope for doing research on this direction. The threat of using nanoparticles uh, additive for the health hazards may be studied in detail to enforce the emission regulations on the use of fuel burn nanoparticle additives. So this we have discussed. The, there is no uh, regulations, especially the uh, fuel burn nanoparticle additives uh, uh, today. But uh, if you work on that, uh, if you are able to uh, develop a technology to control the nano emissions, then this can be uh, enforced uh, as a uh, emission uh, regulation. Okay, so still under uh, okay uh, vacuum. So a lot of challenges are there. Okay, so trapping the nanoparticles. So you you have to work on that. But this again another okay. You have a, a scope okay uh, to carry out research. So I have done uh, um, some publications on uh, nano research. Okay, so the first one uh, published in 2009, it's effect of cerium oxide nanoparticle addition, diesel and diesel biodiesel ethanol blends, and the performance and emission characteristics of a C engine. So this got uh, maximum uh, 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 citations, okay, uh, because it was published in the year 2009. By the time 
the nanotechnology application in ice engine was very limited okay so that is why okay so this paper was considered as a, uh, a reference for so many researchers even today so i get a lot of uh, uh, citations for this uh, <coughs> journal paper the second one uh, got published in uh, 2014 uh, uh, in the journal fuel its effect of cerium oxide nanoparticles and carbon nanotubes as some fuel burn additive in distal blends on the performance combustion emission characteristics of a variable combustion engine so here i added the uh, engine modifications right like uh, a variable combustion ratio engine was used and uh, this nano uh, particle addition, addition uh, is used and uh, with the combination of the uh, alternative fuel uh, then nano additives then engine modification so how the performance and emission characteristics okay are available was published in uh, the year 2014 in the uh, journal fuel this also getting very good uh, uh, citations because of uh, the nature of the work it's all again right the the, the time period but uh, suppose if i write uh, the paper uh, in the similar direction today right it won't get published because it has been saturated so that is that is the reason right so you should be first when you when you plan for uh, a publication right so you you uh, whenever you start thinking right immediately you uh, start implementing and uh, write the papers and uh, upload to the journal then only you'll be able to publish it. So if you uh, get delayed, right, then there are so many people available. So they go for uh, publications. Okay, then your paper, right, even though it is valid and very good, cannot be published in a good quality channel. So this is the uh, thing you should be very careful. So what are thinking you get? Do immediately, convert into work. Okay, carry out some experiment. Identify the uh, variables. Okay, change certain variables. So identify what is happening. Okay and then start writing as a paper then upload to the journal okay so then you'll be able to write give the first hand information to the society okay in a good quality channel so that you know your publications uh, and your uh, ratings right in the uh, engineering field right you have a chance to grow uh, similarly the another uh, uh, work is done on a different uh, nanoparticle like i used uh, alumina nanoparticles uh, for the same purpose, okay. So this was used in a waste chicken wet uh, biodiesel. Uh, it's again operating characteristics of a C engine. Uh, this was a publication uh, clean technologies and environmental policy. So uh, <clears throat> these are the significant publications uh, uh, related to the nano research. But today, if you look into uh, uh, okay search uh, like Google Scholar, okay. And then you can see uh, so many publications are available in this direction so now thing is read all the publications existing publications identify the research gap okay so now the research gap uh, already we have discussed okay so work towards okay the research gap now the major challenge is how to protect your ic engine okay from making absolute so there are so many uh, technologies commercially successful technology become absolute okay so uh, we, we uh, all know that uh, um, uh, especially in the audio right uh, music okay audio technology <clears throat> right uh, the record right the record player gramophone right the records are not available today okay so later we moved into a cassette audio cassettes it's a magnetic tape the technology is not available today after that, we moved into CD technology, right? The once the compact disc have come, okay, for I'm talking about in the uh, audio perspective. So people uh, said that uh, in, instead of going with uh, magnetic tape like cassettes, audio cassettes, right? You can go for a CD, okay? So it's a uh, good, right? The quality of the music is very good at CD. But now there is no CD, okay? Then we moved into pen drives or storage devices so because you need not carry cds right because cd again at junk right you have plastic material right you have junk you have to store so people have find an alternate technology like memory cards okay and memory cards also with the help of nanotechnology downsized okay so all micro level right and then today when memory card technology become obsolete now we have gone with cloud technology 
okay so you you need not uh, have a memory right memory card on your mobile phone right because once we uh, once the memory cards were there and uh, mobile phones were sold okay with the slots okay so they started giving advertisement like uh, you can can go up to 64 mb storage okay you can add memory okay 64 mb or 128 or 256 mb it was great by the time but now that limit is not there okay so even people don't buy memory cards nowadays right because we rely on internet technology right cloud technology so if you want anything simply go to just switch on and uh, connect to the internet whatever you want you'll get it so i'm talking about the right the the known technology become obsolete because of development of alter technology okay so same thing will happen to ic engine also okay so this is the crucial period okay unless you work unless you work on ic engine development and alternative fuel development this technology is going to be a sir absolute technology like how we will have thrown away all uh, technologies right so with this note i want to uh, conclude this session so thank you very much for your uh, patience so any questions please you can uh, ask now or you can post in uh, uh, chat box or you can mail me sir good morning sir yeah good morning sir this is dr r palani chami uh, sir once uh, the nano particle is mixed with the diesel whether it is in homogeneous uh, solution or uh, it is in the heterogeneous form yeah actually nano particle will not get uh, uh, be uh, blended properly it, because it, it's a solid particle right anyway it is a solid particles but you can suspend it uh, with the help of uh, <coughs> some additives or you can uh, use uh, ultrasonic for uh, making suspended for a particular period of time but uh, you cannot make the blend uh, more homogeneous throughout so definitely okay so there will be a setting time if you if you don't disturb right because you are you are mixing solid with uh, liquid right so there will be a setting time if you don't disturb it will set so you need to disturb the system so how to disturb depends on so many things right you can go for a mechanical agitation you can go for a ultrasonic agitation okay so this is what we have to do it so if it is in heterogeneous uh, mixer will it not affect the fuel injection pump and the yes. cylinder yes. liner yes definitely that is what you, you cannot suppose uh, if you if you keep undisturbed for some time it will settle okay it will settle so what you are sending is only the fuel so you are all your nano particle will settle in your fuel tank itself it will not be sent to the combustion chamber that is the reason you have to go for blending okay blending in the sense you can go for a mechanical uh, agitation or uh, magnetic uh, okay kind of thing agitation or ultrasonic uh, agitation you can go for uh, agitation so that now you will be able to maintain the system uh, homogeneous so then only you can enjoy the benefit of the performance and emission enhancement okay Other, otherwise if the system is undisturbed say example you, you you are storing the fuel right you are storing the fuel so it will settle after some time but now you have to go for agitation so you need to develop a system like ultrasonic heater in the fuel tank or a mechanical agitation system so that no so sir what i am asking is agitation. Yeah. what is what i am asking is even the completely mixed fuel with the nano particles uh, will it not affect the fuel injection pump because we, no. we have a... no because it's a nano scale nano scale because it's a nano scale right and uh, what you are using is a very uh, less concentration so right say example less than 100 ppm right then the lubricating properties uh, the lubrication is separate. yeah you are talking about the fuel improve yeah please please can please continue professor so if lubricating properties improve means uh, it increases the viscosity or decreases the viscosity see uh, 
fuel additive you are talking about fuel additive or lubricant additive lubricant additive lubricant additive is lubricity is enhanced so it means viscosity will increase uh, yeah viscosity will increase uh, uh, because of addition so it, it again depends on so how much nano particles you adding definitely it will uh, increase so whenever the viscosity increases will it not if, uh, increase the frictional losses frictional uh, it's it's again yeah it, it, it's again right we have to go for optimization right so it, it adding means the doesn't mean that you can add whatever you want or okay so it's a very uh, um, a careful okay uh, calculation and we have to optimize the parameters okay because as far as nano particles are concerned okay the uh, lowest concentration plays better role than the highest con concentration so even you you will not uh, right uh, realize that the nano particles being added okay so that is the advantage of using nano technology okay so go for linear concentration okay so that no you have a balanced performance otherwise definitely right oh. so you cannot violate uh, the principles okay the mainly right uh, you you are uh, using nano technology because of this size okay so mm, the area to volume ratio so you have to play with the lower concentration so that you will get a benefit that's it that's a beauty of nano technology actually So is there any effect on engine life uh, by uh, addition of uh, this uh, uh, additives to the fuels? If, if, uh, whether the life. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me, sir. Chandra Shagar here. Hello, sir. We are near, nearing the schedule. Please, uh, please be uh, some. Uh, you can uh, cut down the questions, sir. Please, because we have to start the next session by one for eleven forty-five. So be precise, sir. Please. uh uh generally i'll answer this yeah, okay, so as, far as, the, uh, as far as the uh, uh life is concerned right uh definitely this enhances the life okay remember you are not spoiling anything you are you are working to enhance your uh, performance and uh, reducing your emissions with lower concentration of nano additives so you have to remember the lower the concentration the better the performance okay so it enhances the life of the engine because combustion is better right the emission is leaner okay so wherever possible even you you are you your uh, uh, engine is made with uh, a nano finish okay so 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 many things you, you can work on this so ultimately right uh, we have to design Okay. It's like no. It's so a paracetamol is good for uh, uh, fever, but paracetamol is banned in some of the countries like US, right? But without paracetamol, you cannot survive with okay the problem of fever. So if you take paracetamol with 500 mg, right, you you you'll be able to control your body temperature. But if you take okay. Two tablet or three tablet or five tablet, or if you increase the dosage, it affects your health. So this is what right any engineering the materials are playing a good role as far as the lower concentration is concerned. The higher the concentration, it will spoil everything. Okay, it, it's like sugar, right? It's, it's like sugar in tea or coffee, right? So how much sugar you can add, you have to take a decision, right? Because everyone loves sugar. but more the sugar will spoil the food similarly the salt more the salt the food is getting spoiled similarly the correct quantity of salt enhances the taste similarly engineering is also right need to be having uh, and uh, have an analogy with the actual system okay so we have to go carefully okay the selection of the material the quantity of use all those things we need optimization otherwise it will not meet the requirement or what is been planned for okay thank you thank you professor uh, thank you sir uh, thank you dr pranay chami for your interest uh, because i am very sorry that we have to we cannot prolong uh, okay i hope you understand sir
சார் அருமதி சொல்லுவேன் சார் வெரி கைண்ட் ஆஃப் வெரி தேங்க்யூ கிவன் வெரி நீட்லி வெரி பேஷியன்ட்லி ஆர் எக்ஸ்பிளைனிங் ஆல் தோஸ் திங்ஸ் வி ஆர் வெரி மச் இன்ட்ரெஸ்டட் சார் ஸோ யூ ஹவ் கிவன் சம் சம் வால்வேஷன் ஹவு தி நனோ டெக்னாலஜி ஆஃப் இவால்வ்ட் ஹவ் நனோ டெக்னாலஜி கேன் பி யூஸ்ஃபுல் இன் ஐசி இன் தி டெக்னாலஜி டர்ம்ஸ் ஆஃப் ஃபியூவல் கூலண்ட் அண்ட் லூப்டி அண்ட் எக்ஸெட்ரா யூ ஹவ் ஆல்சோ ஓப்பன்ட் அப் மெனி ரிசர்ச் சேலஞ்சஸ் அண்ட் ஆப்பர்ச்சுனிட்டிஸ் தி அப்ளிகேஷன் ஆஃப் nano particles in ice engines so you have also underlined the, uh, the word uh, ice engines cannot be completely avoided and uh, we should take care to uh, become uh, to in making uh, uh, the ice engine technology obsolete you have drawn a very good example of an audio system so it is very interesting sir so with this few note uh, uh, few words uh, i am thankful uh, to the speaker of this session so thank you armuli selvan sir thank you for joining us sir thank you thank you very much thank you all if you have queries you can uh, uh, post a message uh, okay uh, in the chat box or you can mail me okay or you can share with uh, dr chandra sir i am happy to uh, respond to that thank you very much thank you sir thank you sir so dear participants uh, the next session is scheduled uh, uh, at 11:45 i hope uh, the speaker will join us soon okay so uh, if he joins you can start the next session thank you sir so we wait